What's up, everybody? This is Carmine Davis, and you are watching and listening to The Carmine Davis Show. What the fuck is up, bitch? You know, happy Halloween, everyone. I just had um, a poor woman not here in my house to celebrate Halloween. Girl, I have this filter on, bitch. What am I doing? to um do the halloween thing and like dress up in costume and post on instagram and do all those things so it just halloween just kind of comes and goes for me i don't know why I, I i guess i get so busy around halloween or before i always october is a very project heavy kind of month like i'm always pushing out things that i need to do towards the end of the month. So I just, Halloween just kind of passes me. So I end up always just kind of doing something simple. But um, I doubt I'll do like a Halloween anything. But if I do, you know, you'll see it first on Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis or whatever. But um, yeah, so let me hurry me to the show. I'm still a little drunk. We drank a lot mixing. Um, I made like um, signature cocktails. I did a, um, what is it? The... I did a martini, um, my, my, what is it, my magnetic, magnetic mango martini. Uh, I did the Salem, a Salem margarita. Uh, and I did um, a blood red sangria kind of thing. So we had a lot of shit going on, um, you know, and some wine and stuff going around. But so I'm tired. We were up until six in the morning. Let's just get this show popping, okay? Um, before we do, make sure you guys follow, subscribe, rate, and review this podcast, whether you're new, one of those weird listeners who comes and, and doesn't really subscribe. Um, um, make sure you guys follow, subscribe, and smash that follow button. I don't do this shit for my health, right? So, um, and let's just kind of get into the show Thank you guys again. Thank you, dolls, for streaming um, my single "Never Gonna Love Again." We're damn near close to two two thousand. I mean, twenty thousand listeners in the first two weeks. I thank you guys so much. I never expected this. Um, I, I appreciate you guys every day. I think we we meet we met a a, a listening surge yesterday, Thursday, right? I think it was Thursday. So uh, I appreciate you guys um for keep streaming it dolls keep it climbing keep it climbing add it to your playlists um i can't thank you guys enough so um we're gonna get into the show because again i am exhausted um this first hot topic um okay so i've been kind of avoiding to talk about kanye right but it's kind of hard to avoid like if you haven't noticed i have literally been jumping around the kanye west stuff because i feel like one it's um a sticky situation i talked previously about kanye on my show about how i felt like he was a misunderstood genius and in the last year or so i felt like he has definitely tried it honey like i want to root for kanye i believe in kanye but I always tell everyone, if I'm sexually attracted to someone, there is something wrong with them. It's it's not, it's 10 out of 10 every time. I know it for a fact. If I'm sexually attracted to a particular person, there's something wrong with them. You could take me to a, a court jury, um, put somebody, a man on stage or a woman on stage. And if I find them sexually attractive, there's something alarming about them. <laughs> Red flags everywhere. There's something that we need to talk about. There's something going on with them. Um, they have a problem, whether it's um, a lack of empathy, <laughs> a lack of concern, a lack of um, even just a, reading the room. So I feel like with Kanye, I know, and I said for, and I said on my previous show, um, I'm going to click it here um, on the podcast. I think we talked about Kanye 
uh, season one and his mental issues and how I feel like we don't, we're not, we're not processing as a group of people what we're seeing him do in the manner of which I, I feel like we need to process it. Um, we're looking at someone who is suffering from mental um, unrest, um, someone who is who has been very, um, what do I want to say, who's been very open and vulnerable about their mental issues. And the things that we see them acting out and lashing out, we have for a decade or so, I felt like more than a decade or so, we have constantly... They always said they set you up just to watch you fall. And I feel like we've watched Kanye for years lash out, do things that normally someone, if someone cared about them and they knew that they suffered from bipolar disorder or whatever, they would ask them, hey, are you taking your medication? Have you spoken to your therapist, your psychiatrist? Friend check, hey, I've noticed that you've been lashing out. But we've always awarded Kanye with what he loves the most. Uh, attention and um, um, we've awarded him with notoriety and more power um, and more um, like money you know I have easy items in my my closet you know what I'm saying like I have easy hats you know I purchase things because you can never take away the fact that this man has created such a great brand and such a lifestyle um, uh, for a lot of us and uh, that doesn't mean just like other designers that he's not suffering. And so I feel like if this was someone like, um, you know, um, like Mark Jacobs has notably had issues and bouts with depression publicly and all those things that people have held him accountable. And they have looked at him and, and reached out to him with Kanye. We tend to isolate Kanye and on the internet, we tend to laugh it off or um, keep reporting about it and spin it in a way that is entertaining and make it seem like it's always okay that what Kanye is doing. The things that he's been doing has not been okay. For a very long time, this is a man who is crying out for help. And now, of course, you can say anything. He could call me a nigga. He could call you a, you know, racial slur. He could call anybody a homophobic slur. He can do whatever he wants, right? But when it comes down to them rich white Jews in, uh, in them companies, they took him the fuck down. Do you hear me? And now this man has financially suffered. And I feel like people are le turning their backs against him left and right suddenly so quickly. And I feel like we don't realize that this situation is kind of charging, right? So that's just my backstory. I feel like we need to we need to understand the same energy that needs to be put in supporting Kanye by buying his shirts and his shoes. We need to rally beside Kanye and also give him, um, make sure that he's held accountable and get the help that he deserves, that he is falling onto a safe space and that he will fall and continue to be loved and that we make sure the next time that we know the signs that when Kanye is kind of languishing, right? Because he is languishing and he's spiraling. And we don't need to turn our backs on him and laugh it off or make it like tabloid fodder. Someone needs to go over there and check on him because we've lost so many different legends um, so much, I mean, so, so much so often for the same things. We built them up to these gargantuan levels and then we just watch as they fall and laugh about or, or cry when we find out that they have had incident, you know, and we didn't see this, I thought we didn't see the signs. All right, this first hot topic is from lovebyscott.com. Uh, Kanye West says he's been beat to a pulp amid anti-Semitism scandal. Uh, Kanye West clearly does not know when to shut up. The rapper now says he's been beat to a pulp after losing nearly $2 billion in all of his business partnership as a result of his anti-Semitic remarks. The Yeezy designer kicked off a new message on Instagram by demanding to see the contracts while he's, st oh, he's still owed on allowed on Mark Zuckerberg's platform. <laughs> Um, let's see the contracts, the film contracts, the sports contracts, the music contracts, the mortgages, he wrote using a, po using a poetry form. Let's see the contracts so we can be, or so we can, or better yet, will do better business. I've been beat to a pulp and there's still no accountability. West's statement follows Adidas' decision to terminate its long time to running partnership with the rapper turned designer. 
Adidas does not tolerate unsolicited medicism and any other sort of hate speech. The athletic company said in, in, in a statement, Ye's recent comments and actions have been unacceptable, hateful, and dangerous, and they violate the company's values of diversity and inclusion. I'm sorry. <laughs> And inclusion, mutual respect, and fairness. West 45 appeared to try to quickly pivot from the loss, which cost him his billionaire status, by showing up uninvited to a Skechers corporate office in Los Angeles. Considering Ye was engaged in an unauthorized filming, two Skechers executives escorted him and his party from the building after a brief conversation. A spokesperson for the Skechers company, I mean the Sneakers company, said, The Praise God performer has been under fire ever since vowing on Twitter to go death con three on Jewish people. He was suspended from the platform shortly thereafter, but was reinstated Friday, seemingly after Elon Musk's takeover. Uh, however, Musk quickly said West's return to the platform took place before he acquired the company. They did not consult with me or inform me, Musk 51 wrote. Um, yeah, so, okay, after you know, after saying white lives matter, you know, po posting that, I felt like that was like a dangerous, that was a dangerous thing for him to do. And not that white lives don't matter, but what was that? Like, you don't have to go, you don't have to put on a shirt to know that white lives matter. You know, you could just step outside of your house. Black people don't need a reminder that white lives matter. You know what I'm saying? That's not something that we put on a shirt and dress and sit next to Candace Owens ass and talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like, we... We, as black people, know, right, that white lives matter. Trust and believe. If there's any doubt or any question in the mind that if, if what, that, that white lives matter, I could just literally walk outside and look around, right? I don't, I don't have to go too far. To, I don't need a Yeezy shirt to tell me that. Um, especially not Candace Owens rocking it with you side by side, looking crazy. Um, I do, I felt like also him attacking Pete Davidson, um, how he treated uh, Kim, that, what, 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 the moment that stood out to me when I was like, oh yeah, yeah, he is, he's spiraling and we need to say something and do something, is, and I talked about it on the podcast previously, was when he was up there when he was running for president. One, when he was running for president, you could, Mark, okay, so, signs of bipolar disorder. I want to break it down for you for a little bit. Like, these are just normal symptoms, like everyday symptoms. Like, you have mood swings, sadness, elevated mood, anger, anxiety, apathy, apprehension, euphoria, general discontent, guilt, hopelessness, loss of interest or loss of interest or pleasure in activities, um, and irritability, risk-taking behaviors, disorganized behaviors, aggression, agitation, crying, ex ex excess desires for sex, um, hyperactivity, impulsivity, uh, restlessness or self-harm, unwanted thoughts, delusion, lack of concentration, racing thoughts, slowness in activity, or false belief of superiority. Um, depression, manic episode, agitated depression or paranoia, weight gain or weight loss, a difficulty falling asleep or excessive sleepiness, fatigue, or rapid and frenzied speaking. Um, these are all things that Kanye exhibited literally in his run for presidency, right? Kanye is a very smart man. So I feel like he, he always knows how to turn things around and work and survive. But that doesn't mean that the things that he, he is, do, is doing all the time are really calculated. They just go with what we know about Kanye and he knows how to cause a frenzy, which makes bipolar. That's why a lot of huge stars are bipolar. Um, I have been quite as kept. I was diagnosed at a young age with bipolar disorder, um, by, but by like a clinic or something like that. And I went and got a second um, um, opinion and, you know, I'm don't have technical bipolar, I have bipolar traits. So I do understand uh, the, the, I guess the difference is because, you know, there are some times when I can be very irritable 
or I can be very moody, or I feel like the world is coming to an end, or I can be really fren frenzied, or this, that, and the third, but I'm aware and I can stop it. I feel like, and I feel like that's the spectrum of bipolar disorder that I am on. Um, whereas Kanye is on a whole nother level. And that is something that when you're out there and you're in this bubble, people look at you like an animal in a cage. You're like running around and you're doing all these things and everybody's just, woo, he's running for president, tuned in. But to me, I remember seeing that him crying on that stage, revealing all these, like this personal information about Kim and his marriage and her body and her um, choices as, as she chose not to have a baby and, or, you know, she chose you know, like all these other personal things that he was just rattling off and crying. I remember him just weight going up and down so much and him crying about how he had to go um, get, what is it? Didn't he get um, gastric bypass or something like that? Like him opening up about having to go and get um, cosmetic surgery to, to feed what he felt like they needed. And then his weight kind of gained again. And his, it's clear that... Through that time, I knew right then and there that Kanye was going to a place that he could no longer come back from or no one was helping him come back from. I believe that he could come back from it, excuse me. But I felt like Kanye was spiraling. And I felt like nobody around him loved him enough or was concerned enough or even had, I won't even go there. I would say they don't have the, the wisdom to how to deal with him in the proper manner because Kanye to me and I feel like this goes back to what I always say the show is pro-black pro-gay and pro-woman right Kanye is black you know and I think black men tend to be the most sensitive and the most tender people in the world and I feel like people see him as this big giant this scary person escorting him out He's having a room with the film crew because these people are clearly, you know, afraid of him. They're cutting him off. They're taking him off of platforms. And so to a certain extent, he does come off like this big angry bear, right? But in reality, people don't see that actually he's just a bad boy, like a bad kid who needs someone to sit him down and love on him properly. He's a grown ass man and he should have, I'm not, I don't want people for the, for the record, I don't feel like Kanye, I don't feel like, I don't feel like he should not be reprimanded. I felt like if he was reprimanded a long time ago, we wouldn't be here. That's all I'm saying. Like, I felt like if it was, if it was some, like when he was first lashing out and doing all these things, um, literally pulling focus from one of the most important elections that we've ever had like we it, that was to me when I felt like we for sure needed to as people even as just black people we should have just been like yeah baby sit this one out like no what's going on talk to me and I'm sure someone did but did they I mean like that's what you have wives a wife for someone who can legally come in and get you counsel someone who can force you into inpatient or all those things I, I, I truly believe that no one cared enough about Kanye enough to step in and get him the help that he needed a long time ago. I think people used Kanye for his vision, his notoriety, and they popularity and all those things, and then they fucked him in the end. And I felt like once things got harder for them, once they saw that he was spiraling and he was hurting the people around them, that's when divorce happened. That's when people were cutting ties. But when they saw him, a part of, to me, I think, I look at relationships to me as investments and partnerships. Even as a friend, I believe that, okay, all the good times that we have together, also, I have to reprimand you when you're wrong. I have to come on here and tell you when you're wrong. And then I have to let you know what's going on with you. A oh, girl, I don't think that's okay. Oh, girl, I feel like you need to go talk to somebody. Have you spoken to a doctor? Have you done this, that, and the third? Um, but if I was married to you, oh, yeah, we're fighting. You're going to a therapist. You're going to a psychiatrist. You're doing all these things. Or we're done. And I don't really believe that. 
because I remember Kim speaking out a lot about in support of the things that he was doing, how he was attacking Taylor. And all these things that he was doing in her favor, it was okay then. But when he started bringing up her mess at the rallies and all that, that's when she started to distance herself. And I felt like to me, people were had more interest in themselves than they do of Kanye, and this is the direct result. Um, Adidas was not vocal about when he was previously running for president and he was damn near interrupting a whole election. Uh, they were not concerned. <laughs> um, you know, now we're here and I feel like we might be sending the wrong message to someone who needs love and care. Do you get what I'm saying? Leave a comment below. You know, I, I think that we need to pray for Ye. Because if something happened to this man, we will be sick. And I thought like we need to keep that in mind, that that's a possibility. Stop running and, and maneuvering in misery. And look at people as people, as you would want someone to look at yourself. And if I was languishing and running around here and misbehaving, and y'all have rooted me on for so long, now I'm here. And I'm at my wit's end and I'm starting to see that, oh, wow, I really fucked up. I really stepped in at this time. Someone needs to hold him accountable. Like, yeah, baby, you did. And this is how we're going to get you on the right path. Do you get what I'm saying? Leave a comment below if you feel what I'm saying. Um, and we're going to move on. Like I said, I'm, I'm a little tired. So, um, okay. So this next, <laughs> okay. So this next hot topic. Um, from lovelyscott.com, Mel B is engaged to hairstylist Rory McPhee after three years of dating. Mel B announced on UK TV show Celebrity Google Box, or yeah, Goggle Box, that she is engaged to her boyfriend of three years hairstylist Rory McPhee. Just in her signature animal print, the Spice Girls told comedian Ruby Wax about the engagement. He said, I love you. You're my best friend and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Uh, recap Mel B, whose real name is Melanie Brown. She also shared that McPhee, who styles hair for the current season of The Masked Singer, popped the question during a trip in Berkshire. Berkshire. Uh, there were rose petals everywhere, a log fire, a hotel, which was uh, cl cl clogged in, clipped in. It was very romantic. I love flowers. Brown 47 added. The stop singer was previously married to Jimmy Golzer from 1998 to 2000, and the former couple shared 23-year-old daughter Phoenix Chai. Or Phoenix Shy. I will fuck up a name, child. <laughs> Brown was also married to Stephen Bel Belafonte um, from 2007 to 2018. I'm Stephen Belafonte. And together they share custody of daughter Madison, 10. Brown's divorce from Belafonte took a nasty turn when the pop star accused him of abuse and filed for a restraining order. In response, Belafonte called her a dangerous liar. Upon finalizing... Um, their divorce, Brown had to pay Belafonte $350,000 in legal fees. The pair were also ordered to set aside $1 million when they sell their former marital home to pay back taxes they owed. Brown was also in prior relationship with Eddie Murphy, with whom she shares a 15-year-old daughter, um, Angel Iris. We have to admit, after everything she went through with her last husband, we didn't think Melby would want to get married again. Definitely, but... I'm proud. I, I like her. I always, you know, because I'm a big Spice Girls fan. Like, I'm a huge Spice Girls fan. Like, literally, that's exactly where my mind is now that I dropped my single. I'm like, bitch, I'm living like a motherfucking Spice Girl. Um, you know, like, I'm going to uh, do my thing, honey. You know, I'm, I'm going to live it up and uh, do what I got to do, honey, you know, stop right now. Thank you very much. Never going to love again. You know, like, but I, I think I'm going to say Mel B to me clearly knows how to pick them. <laughs> and I feel like that's what I want to say about that. And I want to keep it moving. She definitely kind of has a type. At least two of those men I know, you know, have seemingly checkered histories but I'm not here to gay bash or you know love who you love I like I talked last week about how I felt like women tend to not be especially black women not to be really open with having bisexual or gay partners 
And I'm just happy that it seems that Mel B does. So cheers to Mel B. Congratulations, baby girl. Because tonight is the night when two become one. I need some. Uh, I'm going to sing her part. Uh, uh, to you, baby. You know, she, if you, you know, anything about music, you know, she kept that, that bottom note going. Mel B, oh my God, you want to talk. Uh, uh, to you. Go listen to it. That's all, Mel B. Uh, uh, to you, baby. Set your spirit free. It's gonna run, run. And then, la 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 She was good for a, a bottom ass husky note. But she was gonna give you that, honey. But we're gonna move on. Uh, from the next topic because I'm tired. Um, but before we do, we did a Twitter poll last week. Um, we talked about, do you believe heterosexual black women are supportive of the gay community as they should be? 67% uh, of you guys said absolutely not. So, I mean, clearly Mel B is, you know, so... Cheers. This is the last and final hot topic. This is coming from lovebscott.com. Um, Michael Jackson's son denounces King of Pop label uh, given to Harry Styles. Michael Jackson's son, Prince, has maintained his father is the greatest music star of all time. On Friday, October the 28th, Prince 25 sat with Good Morning Britain and according to Metro UK explained he's got his own genre and he's definitely an amazing artist, but the King of Pop was a moniker that really made my, really my dad earned. He continued, with so many other social factors that you have to take into consideration at that time, I do feel that my father is the king of pop, will always be the king of pop, and it's not something that you can ever take away because we've just evolved so much as a society that those same factors will never be the same. So when you look at from when you look at from where my father started to where he ended versus where all these other artists started to where they ended, it's just day and night of a difference. Either earlier this year, Tosh Jackson, the Remember the Time crooner's nephew and son of Tito Jackson's, son of Tito Jackson, um, I'm sorry, Tito Jackson also spoke out against Styles being considered the king, new king of pop. There is no new king of pop. He tweeted, you don't own the title, Rolling Stone, and you didn't earn it. My uncle did. Decades of dedication and sacrifice. The title has been retired. No disrespect to Harry Styles. He's mega talented. Give him his own unique title. The late global superstar acclaimed Diamond Certified album Thriller turns 40 in November. The feat will be um, commemorated with a physical re-release -re featuring new music. The making of the album will also be detailed in a forthcoming documentary helmed by Nelson George. Additionally, an unnamed bio biopic supported by Michael Jackson's estate is in the works. Both film projects does not have a confirmed release date. Well, first of all, I did not know that we were calling Harry Styles the new king of pop. I didn't know that. So that's news to me. Um, I, I, are we all calling Harry Styles the new king of pop or is Rolling Stone calling? Because, you know, child, they'll just put somebody on a cover and say this is the new Billy Goat of the century. And, you know, like just to get some clicks. You know what I mean? Like it's a magazine. Like they're just going to say whatever. But I don't even I don't know two Harry Styles songs. I'm not even going to lie to you. And I, I, I probably every time I do this, I tend to I, it comes back. I'm well, I. Three out of ten times, it's come back to bite me, right? Where I, like, completely was like, I don't know who Lizzo is. I, I don't know who Lizzo is, but I went back and I listened to her, and I'm I'm a fan of Lizzo and her her actions. I like a lot of things that she does. Um, who else did I denounce? And I, SZA. I owed, not SZA. Uh, Summer Walker. I went back and I publicly apologized to her. 
Um, who else has I, who who else have I gotten into that I denounced? I but I don't know. I, there's nothing about Harry Styles that makes me want to go and listen to him. I get that he's popular, and like I've probably heard his songs out. You know, maybe let me go look. Like, I want to go through my Spotify playlist. I want to see if I even know this lady because if I have any of her music in mind, and like I'm a big music fan, like I listen to an absurd amount of music. No, no results. No Harry Styles. I don't have, I actually, I don't have a Harry in my library, which is kind of crazy, but I don't know him. I don't know this baby. I'm sorry. I think he's, I, I know that he's like using the gay for pay agenda. You know, I do know that about him. Um, but like what white boy ain't? You know, like, You know the crazy thing about white men though is that they can come in and just be as flamboyant as they want to be and nobody says or anything like bats an eye and then like but if a black boy do it it's like a big thing we have to push that gay narrative but that's neither here nor there the twitter poll this week is do you think that harry styles is the king of pop or do you think michael jackson is the king of pop but i gotta get to bed honey i tried to throw in a little beat i'm still in my pajamas i'm tired and so I'm going to stick this hangover off. Um, and I will talk to y'all next week. I love y'all. Uh, peace. Keep streaming. Never going to love again. And keep streaming the Carmine Davis show. Bye.